All right, so here's how to do number one off the vertical model practice problems. Always start by writing down the profits of the downstream firm. Profits of the downstream firm are the price of what they sell, price of the final good. 1,000 minus 2Q, that's handed to us, times Q. Minus, they have to buy the intermediate product. PD is the price they pay for that, times the amount they buy, which is again Q. Minus their transformation cost, which is 4Q. For the upstream firm, what they earn is PD because they sell the intermediate good and then they've got a cost to getting it for Q. So always start with the downstream firm. Marginal revenue down equals marginal cost for the downstream firm. So 1000 minus 4Q is equal to the price of the intermediate good plus 4. So again the intermediate good is a cost for the downstream firm. Rearrange that for future use. 996 minus 4Q is equal to PD. Pay no attention to the crashing. So, if we knew what PD was, we would be able to figure out what quantity is, what prices is, what profits are. One situation where that's rather easy is where the upstream firm is a perfect competitor. Why? Perfect competitors think their marginal revenue is equal to the price of what they sell. It's a constant in their minds. Marginal revenue is always equal to marginal cost. Well, marginal cost upstream is a four. So now we know what the price of the intermediate good is. Plug it into this equation, 996 minus 4Q is equal to 4. Rearrange, and you come up with a quantity of 248. Now we know what the quantity is. Plug it into the demand curve up there. Price of the final good is 1,000 minus 2 times 248 for a grand total of 504. Now we have the prices, we've got all our quantities, we can figure out profits. Profits of the downstream firm are the price of what they sell times how many they sell. Minus the cost of the intermediate good, 4, times 248, how many they buy. Minus the transformation cost, another 4, times 248, which when you plug it all in, turns out to be 123,008. What about that upstream firm? Well, they bring in $4 for each of the 248 they sell. Cost them $4 to make each of those 248 they sell. Their profits are zero. So that is if we have a perfect competitor upstream. Now, what if we have a monopolist upstream? If we have a monopolist upstream, what we need to do is get a demand curve for them. But we already did that over here. Where did that come from? The optimal condition for their one and only customer, the downstream firm. This right here, 996 minus 4Q, that is their inverse demand curve. So we can write out the upstream profits if it makes you feel more comfortable. 996 minus 4Q, PD in other words, times the quantity they sell minus what it costs for them to make the intermediate good. Marginal revenue upstream equals marginal cost upstream. 996 minus 8Q is equal to 4. Grind that out and you come up with a quantity that is equal to 124. Now we know the quantity when the upstream firm is a monopolist. Plug that into the function for the price of the intermediate good. PD is equal to 996 minus 4 times 124, which turns out to be a nice five, round 500. Now we know the price of the intermediate good. What's the price of the final good? 1,000 minus 2 times the quantity, 124 which turns out to be equal to 752. Now we've got all our quantities and we've got all of our prices. Profits for the downstream firm, the price of what they sell, 752 times the amount, minus their cost of the intermediate good, 500 a pop, times 124 they buy, minus their transformation cost of four, times 124. So plug all that in, what do you come up with? Profits of, what is that? Profits of something. 30752. That is the profits for the downstream firm. Profits of the upstream firm. Okay, it's the price of what they sell, which is the intermediate good, 500 bucks a pop, times 124, minus the cost of doing that, for a grand total of 61504. That is the two monopolist case. Now, what happens if we have a multinational? A multinational owns both parts of the factory. They no longer need to worry about this. So what do we end up with? Well, there's no longer this dual holdup problem, so the quantity is just like it was over here in perfect competition. The quantity of the final good, quantity of the intermediate good, goes back to being 248. 
Well, since the quantity is the same, price for the final good is going to be the same. It's going to be 504. What does the downstream firm get? Well, if the downstream firm is buying that upstream firm, they get the profits when they run everything, when they don't have to deal with the monopolist upstream. So that was 123,008. But they have to buy that factory from the upstream guy, which costs them 61,504. Which turns out to be 61,504. Profits for the upstream firm, they just get their paycheck from selling their factory. That buyout cost, that is what you end up with. If you wanted to do it the other way, which is have the upstream buy the downstream, profits for the upstream firm would still be that profits with perfect competition upstream. What's different, the buyout cost. They would only have to pay $37.52, which equals some number that you can figure out. And what does the downstream firm walk away with? Just what they got for selling their factory. And that is the process for doing the vertical model.